it's very interesting because like when you get those big checks or you get that money, you feel, you think you're like, oh man, it's going to feel great. I'm going to be like relaxed, but you, you, you just chase something else, right? It's just on to the next one. Like yeah. I, we just cashed a check today. I just got back from the bank. We just did our biggest deal. We just did is a hundred. So it's 197,000. Wow. But, yeah. It's crazy. Right. But, but, but that, that was the check 197. But what a lot of people don't understand is when you post these checks, Nate does not, I don't get to keep all that money. Like, right. Like, so it sounds amazing and it is a lot of money, but for me, it's like, I got, I got to keep going. It's not about the money. It's about growing and networking with you. I mean, dude, if I wasn't in the business, we never would have never met. I wouldn't have met people at Sean Terry. So it's, it's a fun journey, but the money it, it's, it's all good, but it's that I agree with you. It's, it, it, it's not the end all be all right. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta find something. And, and, and that's what, you know, a lot of the stuff we talk about when we talk about coaching and, and networking and when people find out how to stay motivated, I tell people motivation is temporary. That's why you got motivational speakers that keep a job. They keep a job because every day they have to motivate. If they just motivated you and you can stay motivated for life, they wouldn't have a job for long because everybody would be motivated for life. <laughs>
I, I take it as like freshman level. You know, you can get in, don't need much credentials, don't need much cash. You kind of just get in and it's cool, it's exciting. But eventually you want to go to the next grade level, right? You want to grow yeah. up. So, you know, we do have rentals. We're able to get to a point now, or I was able to get to a point now where, you know, you have enough of that passive income to exceed everyday life expenses. So, you know, that was pretty much it. You know, we got callers now. Um, we're hiring a disposition manager. You know, we're continuing to scale in, continuing to grow, continuing to build the passive income, the buy and hold. Now we're extending to the entire state. So, I mean, yeah, that's where we're at. Man, sounds like you got a lot going on right now. Sounds like you're you're doing good. Yeah. So let me ask you this. How did it feel? So you said you got your expenses covered right now, right? Through your rentals. Is that, did I understand that correctly? Correct. Correct. <laughs> How does that feel like to, 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 I, I don't have a lot of rentals right now. We mainly wholesale. We don't really keep a lot because we have a bigger team. So, uh, this is my excuse. We have a bigger team. So we, we, we just keep going, we keep paying them out. We keep growing it. But, um, how does that feel to have those expenses covered? It's, it's, it's one of those things that once you get your mindset, right, starting this business, believe it or not. I think it becomes more than what you feel. And what I mean when I say that is it's just like getting in this business for money. Well, even once you start making money, you'll start to find out there's something that's not being fulfilled and money can't be the chase. Right? Yeah, brother. Money, money is the byproduct of, of, of what we're trying to do here. So, you know, kind of a long answer, but basically it feels good to know, okay, worst case scenario, if wholesaling becomes illegal in our space, mm -hmm. um, I don't have to worry about going back to get a job or, you know, if they tried to shut us down or if business, you know, just went terrible. Yeah. You kind of know you at least you're covered in your everyday life expenses. So whatever, but even then, man, you know, if you're continuously writing goals and setting goals, it's like, once you hit that goal, man, you end up chasing another goal. And that's why money can't be it because money will keep you running. You know, you got to find a, a, a space where peace yeah. can overwhelm everything else. And that's where you want to live at. It's it's very interesting because like when you get those big checks or you get that money, you feel you think you're like, oh man, it's gonna feel great. I'm gonna be like relaxed, but you 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 just chase something else, right? It's just on to the next one. Like yeah. I we just cashed a check today. I just got back from the bank. We just did our biggest deal. We just did is a hundred, so it's 197,000. Wow. But, yeah, it's crazy, right? But 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 that that was a check, 197. But what a lot of people don't understand is when you post these checks. Nate does not, I don't get to keep all that money. Like, right. Like, so it sounds amazing and it is a lot of money, but for me, it's like, I got, I got to keep going. It's not about the money. It's about growing and networking with you. I mean, dude, if I wasn't in the business, we never would have never met. I wouldn't have met people at Sean Terry. So it's, it's a fun journey, but the money it, it's, it's all good, but it's that I agree with you. It's, it, it, it's not the end all be all right. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta find something. And, and, and that's what, you know, a lot of the stuff we talk about when we talk about coaching and, and networking and when people find out how to stay motivated. I tell people motivation is temporary. That's why you got motivational speakers. They oh. keep a job. They keep a job because every day they have to motivate. If they just motivated you and you can stay motivated for life, they wouldn't have a job for long because everybody would be motivated for life. <laughs> that's hilarious that you say that. Like m motivation is is not it's not forever. right? It's temporary. That's so true. I mean, this, so everybody's like, how do you stay motivated? Like, I get, my question for you is how, how do you stay motivated, man? Three years of this, you've had, uh, just like me, I'm sure it's been up and down, right? Yeah. Yeah. Losing hair. That's why I started <laughs> growing it because <laughs> I was in denial. Okay. Yeah. Um, how do you stay motivated? Purpose. You know, um, finding purpose, finding things that none goes through. You know, I had the job. I, I had the golden handcuffs, as they call it, you know. Yeah. I was working for the city. So the worse things got, the better they got for me as an employee, mm -hmm. basically. But you start to go through enough things. And for me, you almost kind of get got to get angry, you know. So I'm good at looking at things around me. And this is what really helped my mindset is being present. Yeah. Keeping that, keeping that reticular activating system always, you know, just just on 10, just, just at the highest level it can perform at. And just... If I don't get out of this bed, if I don't do, if I'm not willing to go hard for myself, I'm going to end up having to go hard for somebody else. And right. as we know, if you got to move into employment or anything, 
I just have all these sayings that I learned from other mentors and coaches. No matter how great your job is, you know, no owner of a company will ever pay you enough to be their neighbor. They're not going to pay you enough to be in the same tax bracket as them. That's a good right? point. And so you just think about all those things. And when you do, because, you know, you have lazy days. It, it happens. So I let people know that you're going to have days you're not going to want to do the business. You're going to want to quit. You're not going to want to get out of bed. Yeah. You know, welcome those feelings because that is part of the entire game is you're going to have those feelings. It's true. Tell yourself, if, if I'm not willing to go all in on myself in this casino of life, I can't expect someone else to go all in on me. And that's what yeah. keeps me saying, OK, keep going. Wow. So you, I kind of want to take what you said. You, you had a job where you worked for someone else before you got into real estate. What, what were you doing? So most of my work tenure should actually came from me working for the city of Milwaukee for housing authority. Oh then, yeah. I was doing that for about, about nine, about nine years, nine, nine and a half years. And I was also going through my whole firefighting thing as well. So I actually left the fire service was the last job I had prior to going full time into the real estate space that's wild man yeah so i walked away from the fire service which you heard about it is literally the best job you could have well aren't you like three days on like three days off or something crazy like that yeah i mean so different fire departments have different schedules you know they do have like a california shift so you know in our you know our county you know my particular area you know you can work 24 hours and then you can be off for a couple of days but then the way i was working was i was actually able to kind of like send my schedule for the days I wanted to work mm -hmm. and then I can work a 24 hour shift or I can work a 14 hour shift, you know? So it was convenient for the real estate because yeah. I didn't have to, even at 24 hours on and then like our city is 28 on 48 off. I didn't have to really be under that schedule. I can literally get a month sending eight days mm -hmm. or eight shifts that I want to work. And I was literally kind of, scheduling those around what I wanted to do in real estate. And then it got to a point where, as you know about this business, when you start revving, it starts taking you full time. And yeah. I, I had a decision to make. So again, I had to go all in on myself. How, how do you feel about that decision? Worth it? Would you kind of, do you kind of want to go back sometimes? So as crazy as it sounds, it's almost like I want to go back just to kind of have a job. As, as crazy as it sounds. It's know, kind of fun to have a job. I mean, if you like the job, yeah. You know, and again, when I was there, I had a, a completely different mindset, too. So I'm a person that I learn from everyone I, I encounter with. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand you can learn from everyone, but everyone can't teach you. Right. So I love to just be around people. You know, now I'm around some of the veteran guys that's been there for 20, 25, 30 years, hearing their perspective, hearing right. them talk about retirement. And now, you know, real estate, that's one of the things that you got to start to taking consideration too because now we don't have a you know a 401k through an employer you know wow. with a company match you know now we got to start thinking about how to set ourselves up so we're looking at individual retirement accounts and all these other ways of investing so it's, it was good while i was in the real estate space doing what i was doing to kind of just hear the mindset the language the perspective to just see how everyone was doing their thing so i mean i feel like i made the right decision because again even if I was to quit what I do and have to go back and live in a cardboard box, I do hardly think I could sleep at night. Cause again, I knew I went all in on myself. Yeah. It's the other way around that I feel I would regret. Dang man. So you have any crazy stories from being in the, the you said the fire service. Is that, what yeah. is that, is that's like firefighter, right? Firefighter. Yeah. Firefighter. So any crazy stories from that, that you would like to share? Um, no, not really. Um, you have to uh, like bus like going to a flaming building to save a baby or something no a lot of our stuff so the i was i was honored because the the fire department that i worked for if you know and, and the thing is in you in the fire service they'll probably tell you 80 to 90 percent of your calls you know 80 percent of your calls is is is, is, is medical yeah right? Right. that's medical. what i've heard yeah a lot of them are medical and so fire, I, fire doesn't really happen too much yeah now they happen like my city they happen often but i was in kind of like a more you know um uh, above median price point property area so a lot of things were more expensive a lot of more commercial buildings and things Got like it. that so a lot of it was more medical anything that was fire related it would just be what they call a mutual aid where okay. you know this this area has a fire they need backup 
you know, we go over there and maybe just throw some water on it or go in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're yeah. not the first. We're not, we're not, we're not the first ones in. So right. Okay. We have so, stories that I sat around and heard like from other shifts. Hey, this happened last shift, but I don't have anything that's like crazy, crazy mm -hmm. that I could think of. And now I got a follow-up question for that. So I asked you in the fire service if you had anything crazy. You were nine years, right? I was nine years with the city of Milwaukee. The fire service, I was about two years. Okay, so two years, and you've been a three about three years in real estate right now, right? Correct. I bet you got some crazy stories in real estate, right? I mean, you've probably seen some stuff. Yeah, bro. So I mean, I'm the same way. I'm <laughs> seeing some crazy things sellers have said and have done. So I, I, I was just like, you, you feel like you probably see some crazy stuff in fire service, but I mean, do you have some things you, any experience you like to share from your, your investing that may be a funny experience, a crazy experience? Yeah. So, I mean, I think once you start to get into a lot of self-development, so the craziest stories I could think of is dealing with tenants. Oh, dealing with dealing with tenants tell me about literally, yeah literally right now the call i was on was just a property in regards to a tenant so i mean we had a situation one of yours one of your properties no 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 we were wholesaling so oh. the buyer they were just done they were like i don't even have money to file an eviction the tenant has been in there for eight months haven't oh. paid they've been moving they've been moving for four months and you know they're just kind of just playing the system and this is why i think it's important about the mindset right and not letting one's problems deter you from being able to assist them to overcome them mm -hmm. because you have to understand your you know obviously you got to check with your laws but you know we understand that we can go in and offer cash for keys of course you know so i always tell people this is kind of you know pivoting a bit but when it comes to contracts agreements anything you put in writing understand and this helped me with even how i negotiate in the position we put ourselves in you can put anything in writing and it could be legally binding and we can sign to it. But understand if we agree mutually on anything outside of that, mm -hmm. that can supersede what's on paper. You obviously just want to get it in writing, getting stuff in writing is just in case there's a disagreement and we got to go to court. Right. Yeah. So okay. I, I say that, although it's, it seems, you know, common sense, but the reason I say that is because there's owners that say, well, they have a lease and the lease doesn't end until November. And here we are in February and they haven't paid me and I can't evict them because, you know, it's illegal right now due to, you know, moratorium this and forbearance that, and, you know. And so they think they have to sit and wait if they don't have the money to file the eviction. Well, what is a lease agreement? It's right. just a mutual agreement. Landlord and tenant can agree on anything outside of that. The idea is to put it in writing so there's no mm -hmm. misunderstanding and then you have both parties sign. So I say that to say, well, owner, you're willing to sell. We can go in there offer them $500. And if they're willing to move and take $500, and again, now we're offering that benefit and that service. Right. You can tell them, you know, you're not going to allow this to hit their, their report. So you're not going to go and file an eviction. You know, seller, do you feel like you need to file any judgments? Because you can for the rent they may owe you. And a lot of times the seller may just be done with it, right? So we'll tell them, hey, you're not willing to file any judgments. You're you're not going to put any evictions on, you know, the tenant's name. We can go in there and sell that to the tenant and offer them cash to basically keep their name so they can be able to go anywhere and rent and they don't have to have any of this on their credit. Yeah, man. I mean, those evictions can jack them up. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And it's getting... There's a lot of renters looking for, for housing, you know, and that kind of mm -hmm. comes from the housing bubble that we're in. So if you got a good property, you know, you can get a nice, you know, amount of rent for it. you're not, you're not, you're not straying to find tenants. So we go to the tenants in those situation and we sell that to them as well. Let them know, mm -hmm. hey, you know you have not paid rent. Okay. It's over now. You can be evicted. Here's what we're here to do, and here's what we're here to offer you. Okay. You get to walk away scot-free. You right now, you owe $5,000 in rent, okay? We're in a position where we can have that literally wiped away clean. I will put that in writing for you. We literally will not have any eviction showing up on your record. You will see this in black and white in writing for you, okay? And you know what we'll do? Because we need to get this done as quickly as possible. We got about two, three weeks. If you're willing to do this, we can accommodate everything we stated. And I can also probably get you $500. 
Wow. Just because I understand it can, you know, you got moving expenses and things like that you want to take care of. I mean, why and wouldn't then, they, right? They That sounds like a good deal. Yeah, there you go. You know, now you got some tenants that don't care about it, but a lot of them, if they're, they're looking at it like, are you serious? And notice, what did I say? We'll put this in writing. So now when we start talking about them signing something, they're more like, yeah, bring it on. Let's sign it okay. versus them feeling like we bring it something to them and they go, well, I got to, I don't know if I want to sign. So we do that with sellers too. You know, we talk about, hey, we'll put this in writing. You know, hey, we'll do this. You'll see this in black and white. So what I'm really doing is making the conversation about agreements being signed just a little more lighter for them to accept when we get to that point. Right? Got it. So you do that with tenants. So, man, we had that happen. We showed up at the house. The tenant agreed that they'll be out by a certain time. You get that out. adrenaline. Do you get the adrenaline rush where you're like, I don't know how this is going to go, but let's let's get it. Or, or you kind of pass. Not really. I mean, I've, I've been in enough situations. And I think a lot of times in this business, too, people don't realize that they have so much life experience, even if you're young and getting started. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't care if you, your only experience is high school. You've been, you know the outsider or something didn't go your way or had your heart broke or someone told you no something you thought was going to work out a car or driver's license or anything and it didn't work like you faced some level of failure at right. some point in life and you've proven that you continue to move on and continue to live so it's just those small wins that you know we don't think it's like getting ready for war. We don't think to take these small failures that we've already had in life. I don't care if it's as simple as failing a driver test and having to go retake it to pass it. Right. You could, you know, you're young. These are things that, you know, when you're getting ready to go into this war real estate, as you walk out the door, you need to be trying to equip yourself with as much weapon and armor as you can and ammo. And that's that's the ammo that you walk out with. I failed at this before. I failed at that before. I tried this and they told me no. Yeah, I had the door slam. So when you get in front of something else and someone says no, it's kind of a chuckle. Like you said, you kind of get more excited. Like, okay, so I've been here before. This is where the gang gets real. Hey, man. I mean, I've, I've learned things that I never thought I'd have to. I've, I went to court once with because a tenant would not. So we bought a property um, on seller finance. You know, they 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 kept the, I guess it was a contract for deed where they, the name, they were still on title, right? But we got, no, how was it, how was it on contract for deed? We they were still, they still had the mortgage in their name, but we, uh, we get, we're on title. I'm not subject very to, subject to the subject to, there you go. I'm not this legalities and stuff. I'm not, that's the thing is like, you don't even have to know this stuff a hundred percent well to get a, a deal like that. So first, my first year doing a deal. So the seller, he wanted, um, $145,000 for his house. He wouldn't budge, but the house was worth 110. So no one could give him what he wanted. But I said, yeah. look, bro, I'll give you 145. I just give it to him five years and I'll give you how much do you need now? 5k. Okay. I'll give you 5k. Uh -huh. And he's, he was an older guy. So I said, he said, can I get, can you give me a couple months to move out? I said, sure. So what happened was he didn't move out when he was supposed to. And then I, when it came to time to a victim, he fought it and we went to court and he's like, no, I'm, I still own it. And he was like trying to push that, like, Hey, I'm still the owner. And I said, no, I bought it. We exchanged money. I'm on, you know, I guess, would you say I'm on title? Deed. You're on the deed. I'm, yeah. I'm on the deed. And the, the, the judge was a little confused. It was kind of confusing for the court, but like, anyway, I was sweating bullets, man. I was so scared. Cause I had already given five grand. I had already like re ready to buy the house. And he was like, I'm not moving. And his whole family wouldn't move. And we're, I was like, bro, I gave you money. I gave you four months to move out. And we agreed on this. And they, yeah. he still didn't want to go. So it was really sad time because, I mean, I, the, I think what happened is the guy was willing to move, but his fan, like his daughter was living there and she's like, you don't have to move. So yeah. he had a lot of pressure coming from the family, but just stuff like that. Now, if I have to go to court again, I'm at least going to be a little bit more ready. I'm, I'm probably honestly not going to do a post possession if I'm doing a subject yeah. too, because yeah. they're on, if this happens again, it, it looks, it looks cloudy. It looks kind of it's kind of difficult to determine the ownership. Not really, but it can be if someone has never seen this. So man, stuff like that happens and you get those scars and those battle wounds and you learn, you learn quick. <laughs> so what was the outcome of it? What did, how did that get settled in court? So what happened is they wanted to keep fighting it. And um, the judge said, look, this is going to take about seven months, maybe eight months to figure out um, the, the loss of rent of the, the buyer is going to be probably like a $1,500, uh, $1,200 a month. So if you want to fight this, um, the guy that was living there, you have to come up with 
seven thousand or six oh, months of yeah. that that money. So if you come up with six and eight thousand dollars to fight this, then we can proceed. And they he's like, I I don't have eight gray AK, and none of the people that were supporting him were like weren't weren't willing to put up the money because he was going to lose anyway. He sold me the house. He agreed. Right. Had him on video uh, on recording. It's just it was an unfortunate event, and it was my first year. So um, again, if you do a subject two. I wouldn't do post possession because they they're it could get shady. It could get tough. Yeah, you, you you stumbled you stumbled forward, man. And like you said, it sounds like you still after sweating bullets, it still went your way. Um, yeah, it, I was you know, sweating, bro. I was shake. I was shaking in the shower the day of the court. I was nervous. <laughs> I would honestly say, man, when you know, because we do some subject twos, you know, you get we're we're in a place in this in this business. You know, you have to start. I think of it like we're the quarterback and we're always trying to build a strong line to protect us. Right. CPA, real estate attorney, right? Good professions around you. So even though we, like us, we have documentation, we're literally the seller signs so much stuff. Right. They initial. I mean, we're talking about I'm not under any distress. I'm not in any duress. I'm not on any medications. I'm mm -hmm. not under any influences. And we have them write out in their own handwriting. I am selling the property. I understand the mortgage is going to stay in my name and ownership is being transferred. And they have agreed to, we have them write this out in their handwriting wow. just for those reasons. And then obviously we let our attorney know about it. So when you do run into something like that, you know, you know, you're going to pay a little bit of money in time, but normally when it gets to just your attorney versus that seller's attorney, they kind of look at the paperwork and the attorney will be like, listen, <laughs> yeah. you, hey, you don't want to fight this. Yeah, like you 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 wrote it out. And we'll get a video now. I mean, just at that, we'll get a, a testimonial video at closing or something because that's wow. when they're at their happiest. They're that's so excited. Great. You think you got this burden off of them and you got a recording of them saying thank you and you guys saved my, you know, saved my credit, you know, all of the above. So when those wow. things come up, here you go, Your Honor. That's impressive, <laughs> man. I meant that you do that. I, I've never thought about doing that, but I... I I think if I were to do another one, I would definitely want to do some to the extent where you're you're saying because you don't want them coming back and yeah. saying, "Hey, hey, what, what's going on?" or you know, calling the bank and saying, "I don't know what's going on." So, I think that's that's great that you do that. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, awesome. So like, where did you learn that from experience, or did like a mentor tell you to get all that done? Mentor, man, coaching, mentor. Did Brandon, tell you that, or somebody else? No, I got that from my man, uh, Mr. Robinson, Tony Robinson, singer. Oh, Tony, isn't Tony Robinson that that's that motivational guy, isn't he? No, that's Tony Robbins. <laughs> Tony, Tony, Tony. So Tony Robinson Sr., if you ever listen to Max, uh Maxwell, he talked okay. about the guy that taught him mm -hmm. real estate and all that and took him in the basement and showed him what wholesaling was. Wow. That's who Tony Rob Tony Robinson is the one that showed Max about wholesaling so, and real estate. So he's and all that. he's the real, he's the real deal. Oh no, he's he's he is legit. I, I you know, I I vet people. You know, I, yeah. I, I'm liable to come to their house. <laughs> he, he, he's serious. He's really, we've already been in situations and, and I've been in situations with just doing this business. And, you know, we talk, we, you know, we speak on it and he literally will be like, this is what you need to do. This is the options of what they're going to try to do. Wow. You know, he, he, I mean, he's been doing it for over 25 years. That so is super he, helpful to have someone like that in your corner. That's yeah. awesome. He has situations similar to yours with the sub too, with, with a couple, a married couple, and they wanted to rekindle. Yeah, and, and you know, and he was like, "No, that's not how this works." And yeah, if you sold the house, I mean, you sold yeah. the house. That's how it works. You just didn't get all the money up front. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, man, that's interesting. So, I mean, this has been an awesome experience to chat with you. Um, we're coming up on thirty. I mean, I could talk probably for for forever, but let's uh, yeah. let's kind of let's kind of like. A, hit on some key points, some golden nuggets that we want the viewers that are watching or that will watch to get out of this. So what do you feel like would provide most value to a real estate investors experienced or brand new? What, what could you tell people right now that you think would provide a lot of value to their, their, their experience, their journey? Well, experienced investors, I mean, just as you said, they're experienced. So, mm -hmm. you know, experience is a vague term. You know, is it experience of three years or experience of 15 years? So they probably already have a sense of direction of where they're going. Mm -hmm. So with that said, I would probably say something more to the newer investors yeah. or maybe let's just getting the, started. Let's go yeah. to the newer investors. What what a golden nugget would you give? What like one or two or a couple would you give to new investors right now? You hear it a lot, but man, it's it's, it's the mindset. 
I mean, if this is a house, the mindset is the foundation. You ever try to build a house with a rocky foundation, it's not going to last long. So, you know, it's, true, the, it's the mindset. And what I tend to like to tell people, because that sounds great. It's such a vague term. What do they mean by mindset? Right, um, right. You got to, you know, and even for me, so I literally share what I do. You have to prime your brain and prime your mind, literally rewire yourself to get ready to do this business full time. And the, and, the, and what I like to use for to, to prepare people to understand that is if you think about when we listen to music or anyone that may have played sports, right? You know, if you play sports, football, basketball, whatever it was, it's not far fetched to see somebody walking around with headphones in. Mm -hmm. in the pregame or in the locker room or whatever it is, right? What are they doing with that music? They're using that music to pump them up, get them in that right mindset to go out and perform, get themselves mentally equipped and ready to perform. Zone out. They use that to focus on what's ahead of me and not focus on maybe where I just came from or the events that's going on in my personal life. So we understand that that's how the brain works anyway, but we don't intentionally use that all around in life so you know flood yourself it could be just listen to motivational videos and everybody has a story everybody has you know a history a background I always say don't make yourself an exception for success right because you're going to see people flashing checks and oh i did a hundred thousand dollars a month and i was there oh well yeah their market is more expensive right they're in three hundred thousand four hundred thousand five hundred thousand dollar price points yeah it's easy for them to say that Come do it in my market where houses are forty and fifty thousand. That was mm -hmm. me getting ready to make myself an exception for the same level of success. So you got to prime yourself. Motivation videos, you know, write your goals down. You know, I'm lazy. I don't like writing. Write it down. Get emotional about it. You know, every time I write anything down, I use the acronym SMART. Right. I want it to be. Bro, I love. I. I mean, I'm not trying to put you on blast, but I love writing. I'm. All, I'm always writing in my little. Bro. I got a little journal over here. Bro, listen. What you got? <laughs> Man, please listen. I was just writing, okay. I mean, I just I won't lie to you. This well, it's probably not gonna show up kind of blurry, but I mean, literally, I, I sit down and write 20. Bro, that, that quit playing, bro. That paper's blank. <laughs> oh man, please look. Do we get oh, there? You uh, go. There you go. Okay, yeah, it was too close up to the light, but I mean, you can see it 2022 <laughs> annual goals. That's awesome, man. I mean, I write I write stuff down. I got January letter. Oh, there's there's power. There's power in the pen, man. People they they type, they use their phones. When you write things down, it does something to you. Well, I got this, I got this pyramid. It's called the cone of learning. And it literally says we we after two weeks, we tend to remember 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear. 30% of what we see, uh, 50% of what we see and hear, okay. 70% of what we say, and 90% of what we do. Wow, bro. So I like that. So when I, I so when I know that, if I can't remember something right away, I'm stepping back saying, how am I receiving this? Mm -hmm. Right. Like me sitting here just listening to someone talk. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. I'm listening to him talk. Okay. Great. 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 Okay. That's like a 30%. Right? Yeah. I'm going I'm to I'm remember like 20% of what's like 20%. being said. Yeah. And a lot of times it's just key moments, like you said, key things. Right. But this is why, even in school, which I struggle with when they talk about show your work or, you know, when you go home, you have to write things down. It's because once you start writing things down, that connection, that mind to pen connection is helping you instill and strengthen what you're learning. Right. Well, I so like that. So just understanding those things, but I've never heard that before. So it's like a, like a, you said like a pyramid or a cone and just like, it shows you the levels of the percent that you retain, depending on how you learn something, how you hear it, hear it. Yeah. Right. You can, you can look it up. I forget what the guy name is. I, I, I heard it in a book. I like that. That's good. But you could probably Google the cone of learning. I'm sure everybody's probably got, you know, different numbers or something for it, but That's sweet. Okay. what's unanimous is the most, the highest percentage is we recall what we do, not what we see, not what we hear, not what we say. The highest retention is when we do. You know, that's the like when you told me when you first got started, you were doing a lot of the analysis paralysis, right? And I talked to, and you do too, in your um, your investor master, uh, your meetups that you do. I'm sure a lot of people are just they're overthinking this, man. You need to get on that phone, start calling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was telling me to do. Yeah. 
Dude, that was what I did, bro. When I first got started, me and my 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 business partner Corey, we we just got Mojo Dialer, and we called a ton of people and got destroyed by sellers. Mm-hmm. But it almost it's almost like that's what you got to do, in my opinion, to get this going. You got to learn. You got to take the heat. Yeah, I tend to, and again, because I when I talk to a lot of new people, I'm always trying to connect what we say. You know, have the right mindset, go out and feel for it. Like all these things that sound sexy and sound cute, but I always try to connect it to something they've already experienced. Okay. Because if I can connect to something they've already experienced, what I'm trying to do is prove to them that they've already done this before. You're already this far, right? Yeah. You've already, I mean, nothing we do. I mean, I'll tell them nothing we do today as adults, we didn't fail at. I don't care. Talking. We didn't know how to talk when we came on earth. We didn't know how to walk. You know how we learned to walk? We kept falling and getting back up. Yeah, yeah. We tried to run and then we fell and then we got back up and we learned how to run it. So I tell them like everything we do, when you really sit down and think about it, uh, it, it we learned it by failing. And when you watch kids, mm-hmm. and this was this was very emotional for me when I started to, because I, I was ready to quit. Yeah, I remember sitting at a park and I was just watching these kids. And if you ever watch little kids, man, you see that they're just fearless. I mean, they'll jump off the highest, whatever. They'll take the biggest risk. They're the best negotiators, yeah, you know. Man. And it's like, because they we're, we're almost born with what we need to succeed, in a sense. Yeah, because right. they they're willing to fail. They're, they they don't even think about it. like my nephew. I mean, he's he's doing things, and I'm like, bro, you're gonna hurt yourself, but he'll yeah. find out. He's gonna learn. <laughs> yeah, and and there's truth in that, right? But when you when you sit back and kind of again, tied to what we need to, again, equip ourselves for this battle, this war of real estate. It's like kids almost have everything we need as adults to succeed. So then the question becomes what happened over the years where we stopped believing in ourselves, where we started to doubt ourselves, where we started to feel like we couldn't do whatever it was. Because like you say, you can see your kid run and do backflips off of tables. And what are we doing as the adults? I mean, there's some legitimacy there, but yeah. we're feeling fear in them. Stop, yeah. quit. You're going to break your leg. You can break your neck. Like we can almost see the tragic before it happens. You know, right. don't run right. because you might trip and fall with that stick in your hand. Or don't. And there's some truth and protection there. But that's our fears, our fears of the inevitable, of what can happen. So I use stuff like that. And it's like, let me ask you something really quick. So when I talk to new people all the time about wholesaling, they the go-to is like the action, the, you know, the, the strategy, learning the specific things, but we, people barely tell people about the mindset. Like, I don't think there's a ton of mindset training within the space. Like we're, we're part of Sean Terry's mastermind. There's, there's a bunch of guys that teach creative sales, marketing dispo, but who's really owning the, the, the mindset space. Like, cause I mean, you, you say it, Carlos Reyes, I hear him say it. I say it. It's like, if you ain't mentally ready, you're going to either quit or you need this part. It's an essential tool to be successful. So do you know anyone that owns the mindset space or is trying to get into that? I don't think there's, I mean, I I don't think there's anyone in particular that's just precise with it. Like you said, that goes deep. Everyone is kind of wide. They touch mindset. Like I said, they touch skill, they touch learning, you know, I think when you start talking mindset, man, honestly, you just got to go look at probably like motivational speakers. You know, Uh, I used to I listen to, like I said, Tony Robbins, Eric Thomas, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk says some things. You know, you can just Google motivation speeches and you'll probably see some things, you know, and I heard Eric Thomas, you know, prime example. He was talking about success. And there's one I think this is kind of what really blew him up. Uh, But he was I'll summarize the story. I don't want to take too much time, but basically Mm -hmm. he was talking about a guy approaching another guy, and I'm kind of paraphrasing the story here, but he was basically saying, one guy was like, hey, I want to be as successful as you. And the guy they were speaking to said, okay, meet me down, you know, by the lake or the river, you know, four or five o'clock in the morning. Right. The guy shows up on time the following morning, the successful right. guy standing in the water. The successful guy tells him, come on out here in the water. So the guy walks out, water's about knee deep. He said, keep coming. Water gets, you know, waist deep, keep coming. He says, as he continues to come, the water gets maybe like to his shoulders. The guy's getting kind of scared. And then he said the successful guy grabbed him by the shoulders and the head and just held the guy under the water. <laughs> Have you ever heard the story? Yeah, man, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And he said, you know, you're fighting and trying to get back. And, you know, basically right before the guy passes out, he pulls him back out and asks him, what did you think about while you were down there? He said, I'm thinking about breathing. I'm thinking about getting air. And he said, you want to be successful. You have to want success as bad as you want to breathe. So, That's true. you know, 
those type of things, which I think what they do is just make you reflect, you know, is this non-negotiable? Because I do, you know, uh, A.M. Milet talks about it a lot. So, again, I think a lot of it is just motivational speakers. Yeah. But a lot of people say they want to get into it. But the reality, and this is just a hard reality, is a lot of our dreams and, and goals and what we want, there's a price on them. Yeah. It can be bought out. Oh, five sellers told me, no, this ain't going to work. I'm going to go back and get a job. Like, they just sold that quick. It was negotiable for them. Yeah. You got to get to the point where that's non-negotiable. Well, the reason why I ask you is because I love – that I, I don't really know any of that space in, in our niche of wholesaling real estate that, but I want to do that, bro. That's like what I I'm passionate about is I'm passionate about like affirmations, uh, reflecting like goal setting scorecards, like, uh, self-awareness, like that stuff. I, I like, I wake up and I have like a routine that I do every morning. It takes me about an hour where I read, I pray cause I'm religious. I, uh, you know, write my journal. Like I think all these things for me have helped me change my mindset, but I don't see anybody really teaching. I've had to read so many self-help books to get like break out like my routine. And uh, yeah, I don't know. That's why I was asking you. Cause I feel, I feel like people, when they hear my motivation or stay like mindset, they're like, Psh. everybody says that man, but it, it's, right. it's so true. Like I've wanted to quit a lot in this business too, because you know, the bank account, I'll tell you, it goes up and it goes down. Okay. And sometimes yeah. you, sometimes you're like, you're, you're running on credit card debt just because you know you got a lot of the bills out you you're running a flip that's just that's just the name of the game, the game. and you got to keep that mindset strong so that's my goal bro i want to help people succeed in real estate but also in their personal lives through mindset like uh having the right proper routines i don't know if there's a space yet for me there but i'm, I'm gonna try and grow it so you're gonna be the, the motivational speaker of real estate because <laughs> like i said every 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 motivational speaker that's pretty much i think they're, that's what they're tapping into. But I'll yeah. tell you what I, I tell new people, mm -hmm. you know, and I ask people, you know, if they have kids or anything like that. And I think in one of our my Facebook groups, I think someone I asked them that, like, what was the one thing they feel is holding them back? And somebody said mindset. Yeah. I said, I want you to do this. I said, You got kids? Yeah, I got kids. I said, I want you to go in there and tell your kids right now. Cause we all teach our kids what you can do anything, you can be whatever you want, never give up, always right. do your best. See, we in, we we instill all these things into the kids, but then you have to have that mirror conversation with yourself and say, are you really living that out? Yeah, that's true. And if, and if you're not, go tell your kids, hey, mommy or daddy, you know what? I had a chance to do different where I could have, you know, changed the family tree or I could have bought my time back to be able to be at all your extracurriculars and all your school events. But you know what? It came down to me having to make phone calls or hang signs or knock on doors and mommy and daddy just didn't want to do that you know yeah I, it, hard. Just, it wasn't that yeah yeah because I, I i feel like parent kids will do that like every every year we're getting older we have a birthday and kids mm -hmm. grow so fast when they're younger but i think it does come to a point where a kid can look at you as a parent or as an adult and just say hey what happened to you continuously growing right you know yeah. And how do you want to answer that question? Like, how do you want to answer that question? Do you want to tell a kid, well, I'm telling you to do everything, but I obviously, you know, I didn't, I didn't believe I can do it. No one wants to tell their kid that. So that's true. That's, uh, that is a way to get him motivated. And for, for me, just kind of go back. Cause I don't know if I'm ever going to be like the, that, those motivational guys that are yelling and getting people excited, but I believe there's systems and processes just like there is in wholesaling or any business. There's a system and process you need to follow with your mindset, your routine, you get up. Cause when I was in college, I used to just wake up whenever I wanted. I had classes later. So I'd wake up random time, go to school. I didn't really have a plan. And I just, my, my, my job or my goal was to have fun, but there was no, per, per, like there was no direction that there was no process. There's no system. So I think in mindset and in, in life, there can also be a process that you follow daily. So I agree with you. I actually agree with you on that, man. There, yeah. there is, a path and a process, you know, to get your mind right. Yeah, I would. There's a manual that you can write, right? Keep your mind right. <laughs> and then how to accelerate that once you get to a point, because once you start making money, it's a new mental challenge. Yeah. Now you're talking about growing a team and once yeah. you start going to hire, there's new mental challenges. Well, how do you stay? So I agree with you, man. I'm with you on that. Yeah. I mean, when I wrestled in high school, I had a coach named Al Savransky. He was awesome. And he, he before a match, I'd be, I get nervous sometimes because I I don't know who I'd be wrestling. I'd be like, maybe he's better than me. But he'd say, Nate, get your mind right. And and I'd be, you know, I'd be like, all right. 
you know, but the life unfortunately isn't always like that where you can just get your mind right and snap it and get into it. You, you got to kind of ease into, it. you got to like reading is huge, right. you know, right. affirmation. So anyway, we won't get too much in that, but I love that you say for, for new guy, newbies, new people, you got to get that mind, right. You got to get your mindset. And I think I agree with you 1000% because, um, because of the things I've been through, I've been through a lot of hard things. I used to do door to door sales. I wrestled. I did a lot of things where I sucked and I got better. So I know that that is the process to getting good at something. You have to go through the trial, the furnace before you get good at something. And that's, if you don't have that right mindset, you're going to give up. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you, man. And it's honestly fun to be in my masterminds with you and other people who like have that same mentality. They're like, Hey, I sucked. But now I'm getting better. Let's get better together. Like that's like the energy you get when you yeah. go to these masterminds, yeah. which is which is really fun. And I think that's kind of the the secret sauce that's maybe not promoted as much with the masterminds. It's not always about the moderator or the person that's putting it on. A lot of times it's about connecting with the like minded individuals in a room. I mean, even if you're struggling and they're struggling, you, I mean, you can literally go in there and just create an accountability group with just you and a couple others. Just saying, hey, we're going to hold each other accountable. And again, what do we know about mastermind? You know, when you leave, you feel inspired. You feel pumped up. You feel like you can overcome any challenge and you're going to go back home and, you know, you're going you're gonna to kill it and crush it and all of the above. Yeah. You know, if you don't have the right mindset and the right people around you and the right circle around you that motivation, that drive, it starts to you start to get back into everyday regular life stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it goes back down until you get to the next mastermind and then you get back up here. And then you go back home. So you got to find out how do I keep being here consistently and then raising that thermostat so I can continue to get hotter and hotter. That's the name of the game, man. Well, hey, bro, it's been it's been a good time chatting with you. I've had a good time. Hope you've had a good time. Always, man. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Anytime, yeah, so brother. You know that. Do you have any promotion you want to promote your, your group or, or say anything before we end just so people know where to find you, what, what you're doing? Um, not really any promotions, man, but you know, I mean, on any platform, you know, you can find me on Facebook, obviously under my name, Damius Alexander, that's D as in David, A-M-I-U-S, last name Alexander. Um, you know, we have a YouTube channel. I used to post quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to, that's going to be my accountability is to consistently, you know, pump the YouTube channel. Oh, bro, I'll help you. I'll hold you accountable, bro. I'll say, <laughs> video? Yeah, you know, just uploading videos and things. But that's that's pretty much it. We have a Facebook group. It's called Extreme Wholesaling. You know, Extreme, that's E-X-T-R-E-M-E. -E, wholesaling with I-N-G at the end of wholesaling. Um, you know, that's pretty much it, man. Just trying to, like you said, just do things live in the group. You know, we have our local meetup. We are potentially looking at making it, you know, where we can have it recorded, where we can have it, you know, virtual so anyone from across the country obviously can tune in and they have any questions and things like that let me um i'm actually going to do something for you so it's extreme wholesaling correct yeah okay facebook so they're going to get this link they, they have this link in the live but we got it right here i got it at the bottom you see that ticker join extreme wholesaling okay. facebook group i got you bro you see it that stream yard is slick i gotta, is I gotta learn all this man yeah, I'm on a whole nother level. I see. Hey, what I can do for you to provide value, if this does provide value, go to my face. You, you, you're part of my Facebook group, right? Yeah. Go to my Facebook group, promote your group. Just say, hey, hey guys, I, I'm cool with Nate. Here's my group. Check it out. I think, uh, yeah, I think I, I'd like to send people from my group to your group if you want. I mean, I got your back. Yeah, yeah, cool, man. I mean, I would even say you can do the same on ours. You know, we, right, let's like do it, man. Just build it together, bro. Each one, teach one. Let's do it. Yeah. So go on my group after this. Put your group in there, and you know I'll go in there and say mine because I mean it's all the same people, right? Like we're all trying to help the same people out, and um, that's why we do what we do, right? Yeah, it's abundance, man. It's it's just all about the abundance. Oh my gosh, so much, so much people, so many people want to get into this. There's there's <laughs> abundance, and so it's the same with you know real estate. There's so many sellers, so we just got to get them. Yeah, people just got to know they get lake michigan with a five gallon bucket yeah. <laughs> like even if you fill your bucket up there's so much oh, you can never take it all with you all right man well thanks again for coming thanks damius and uh investor nation we're out all right appreciate you bro